Okay, let's keep reading Slime Squad. The Fearsome Fists. Chapter 6. Fist Attack. Within seconds, the slime mobile was rocketing away from the secret base and onto the rubbishy roads of Trashland. Zill steered towards the broken furniture valley. I've just had an awful thought, she announced. Ferp nodded. We're about to fight evil monsters. Almost as bad, said Zill. The slime squad has a fourth member without a matching outfit. Danjo reached into a box beside his seat. I've got a spare pair of gold shorts you could wear, Plog. Plog looked at the shorts doubtfully. They look a bit small. Then wear them on your head, Zill snapped. If you're going to join us, you have to make an effort. Feeling a bit silly, Plog squeezed the shorts onto his head and pulled his long ears through the leg holes. As he did so, his nose twitched. He realised that his frozen toes were starting to thaw, which meant that his feet were starting to pong. Ferp had noticed too. I have an idea, he said quickly, hopping over to the lab lab and pointing to two iron cauldrons. I use those for boiling up slime for my experiments. Stick your feet in them and you can wear them like shoes. Okay, Plog said uncertainly. He squashed his feet into them. It was a tight fit. Ferp used his crash helmet to scoop up water from the toilet bowl and ladle it into the makeshift shoes. That should keep the slime under control. Plog was about to thank him when Zill called out, We're almost there. Oh, what is that? Kabang, bang, pang, croon. The slime mobile crumpled and crunched with the impact. Oh, sorry, the impact. Jets of safety slime splushed out from the steering wheel over the four monsters, hardening like rubber to protect them as the windscreen shattered. Plog bounced around helplessly like a giant pinball, yelling in alarm, until the vehicle stopped rocking, the slime melted away, and he fell, trembling to the floor. Thick green smoke poured from the slime mobile's damage controls, hiding the others from view. Zill, Ferp, Danjo, Plog said anxiously. Call out and I'll help you. Oof, came Zill's muffled voice below him. You can stop standing on my tail for a start. Sorry, Plog stooped to help her up, just as Ferp hopped out of the smoke in front of them, his metal pants dented and his crash helmet askew. I can't understand it, the frog monster cried. The Slimeobile's anti-crash sensors have never let us down before. Whatever did we hit? And where's Danjo? Plog asked. Mm. Then, then spotted a tall, dark shape looming out of the smoke ahead of him. Phew, he's there. That's not me, said Danjo groggily, just behind them. I'm here. Oops. Who could it be? So who is that? Zill muttered as the shape came closer. They must have got in through the windscreen, Ferp gulped. Uh, we're terribly sorry for smashing into you. You didn't, came a rough, snarling voice. Our mega missile smashed into you. Suddenly, the smoke cleared to reveal the weirdest monster Plog had ever seen. It looked like a massive fist waddling on four tiny feet. The fist monster's skin was hard and clapped and chapped, covered in warts and blisters. Its thick thumb looked like a giant serpent with three evil-looking eyes staring out from the nail above a dribbling nose and a mean little split for a mouth. I'm Knuckles, the monster growled, leader of the fearsome fists. Two more hulking fist creatures stepped up behind him, looking, if possible, even rougher. This is Palmer and Nail. They're my deputies. Pleased to meet you, said Ferp nervously. We're the slime squad. Er, uh, and Plog. What's, what's a missile? A high-speed weapon invented by us, Knuckles said. You've seen what we can do, so stay out of our way or we'll make you pay. Hey, I do the rhymes, Danjo complained.
but Knuckles and his deputies had already turned and lumbered back out through the broken windscreen. Well, said Ferb, perhaps we should do as he says and, clears off and clear off. No way, Plog scowled. He can't talk to you like that. He just did, Ferb pointed out. Fur boy's right, said Zill. Those creeps just totaled our transport. We can't let them get away with it. Danjo nodded. Let's go to work on the thumb-faced jerks. Plog tried walking towards the doors. Clank, clank. The cauldrons on his feet weighed a ton. He peered out through the, clear, the clearing smoke to find a crowd of frightened monsters watching six of the fist creatures further down the road. The fists were running in and out of the smashed-in window of a rank, rank bank. A black van was parked nearby with a strange contraption strapped to its roof. That must be the missile launcher, Ferb twittered, but Plog was more interested in what the fists were doing. They were stuffing banknotes into the back of their van. Monster money was printed on used toilet paper. The smellier the note, the more valuable it was. And from the stink of the things, these fists were stealing a fortune. Look at me, Knuckles laughed, clutching a bundle of soggy five-pong notes. A bunch of fives with a bunch of fives. Stop, Plog cried, staggering out of the slime bill. That money doesn't belong to you. Knuckles smiled while his friends continued their work. What are you going to do, tell my mummy? A, the, a wrinkly fist monster with grey hair peered out of the van. Ha, huh, tell me what? Shut up, mum, Snuckles snapped. That's no way to talk to your mother, fist-faced, Dan Joe said, jumping down from the crumpled slimer and pointing a pincer, even if she is a big, dumb, crooked monster like you. Zill and Ferp hopped into sight too. Yay, it's the slime squad, cheered one watching monster. They'll take care of these baddies, said another. But who's the big furry one with the buckets on his feet and shorts on his head, said the first one. He's as he's as big a loser as all the others, jeered Knuckles. With a sudden surge of speed, he charged at Plog and punched him hard. Oof! Plog flew backwards and smashed into Danjo, just as Danjo tried to fire a blast of steaming slime from his hot pincer. The sizzling stream struck Ferp instead, full in the face. Ugh! Ferp spluttered, wiping slime from his eyes as his crash helmet started to smoke. Ooh, it's getting crazy. He glimpsed Nail lumbering toward him and tried to hop clear, accidentally whacking Plog in the face with his steel pants before a slap from Palmer set him flying into the screaming crowd. I'll get you for that, Danjo growled at Palmer, raising his cold pincer. But... Nail smashed a nearby fire hydrant and sewer water spurted out at super fast speed. Danjo froze up the water as it surged towards him, but he couldn't stop it and wound wound up buried under a mini mountain of slimy ice. That does it. Now Zill was galloping into the fr Prepare to be slimed. No, Zill, Plog warned at her dizzily. He's too tough to tackle alone. We'll see about that. Zill shot out a slime line at Knuckles, but he simply caught it in his gruesome grip and tugged on it hard. Zill found herself reeled in like a, like a struggling six-legged stripy poodlefish straight into a sucker punch from Palmer. Ow. Plog struggled up and tried to catch her as she flew by, but she was moving so fast that the impact knocked him clear out of his cauldron boots. Oh no. They both went down hard, skidding across the ground and flattening Ferp just as he'd crawled clear of the crowd. This is a disaster, Zill groaned. We can't stop them. Plog watched helplessly as Knuckles, Nail and Palmer thumped closer. My first mission with a slime squad he, th squad, he thought, and it looks like it'll be my last. Chapter 7. Stink out and walk out. Come on, lads, we're all done here, Knuckles' mum shouted, cramming the last notes into the van and slamming the door. Pinky, forefinger, get in here. Two fists, one with a red nose and one with an extra long fingers. Hopped into the... Two fists, sorry, one with a red nose and one with extra long fingers hopped into the vehicle. Knuckles, nail, palmer, let's be having you. Knuckles glared at Plog, Zill and Ferp, then turned to his mum and nodded. All right, he snarled. <coughs> 
This lot won't be giving us any more trouble. Let's move out. Palmer and Nail bounced back into the van after him. They're getting away, wailed a monster in the crowd. We've got to stop them, said Plog desperately. But then, with horror, he saw that his bare feet were oozing slime and the terrible smell was already filling the air. Oh no, he cried, searching for his cauldrons. Ah! The crowd recoiled, clutching their noses. Suddenly, Plog heard the fist's van start up with a rattling roar. Ferp and Zill tried to run after it, but slipped in Plog's foot slime and crashed to the ground. Ah! cried Zill, Zill, Zill cried. The stinky stuff's all over my fur. Ferp cringed. It's even in my pants. Sorry. Plog was trying to squeeze his feet into makeshift, his makeshift boots. I'm so sorry. Danjo crawled out of the ice pile, battered and bedraggled, while Ferp and Zill clung onto each other, struggling to stand upright in the stinky soup. Plog's feet finally squeezed into the cauldrons with a disgusting squelch. Meanwhile, the fists screeched away in their van, leaving behind only a cloud. A cloud of dust and the smell of banknotes. The slime squad stared after them, stunned, slimy and helpless. You were rubbish, a big monster yelled from the shocked crowd. Useless. So much for the slime squad, said a young red blob. To think I used to look up to you. A pale, quaking monster in a pinstripe suit came out of the rank bank. You let them take everyone's money. He stared at the squad. How could you? The crowd began to jeer and boo. Plog's cheeks burned redder than a nuclear strawberry. Zill ran back to the slimer bill with tears in her eyes. Heads hung low. Ferp and Danjo followed her. Last of all was Plog, his head in his hands, his feet in iron buckets, and his hopes and dreams in tatters. It took the Slime Squad ages to return to the hidden HQ. The Slimobile had been badly damaged by the Fist Monster's missile and could only go slowly. Shaken and sad, no one said a word the whole journey back. Plog stood miserably in the lav lab, his feet out of harm's way in the toilet's cold, scummy water. Zill parked the Slimobile in the secret underground garage. Then she, Ferp and Danjo trooped outside. Plog forced his troublesome feet back into the cauldrons and clanked along after the others. The all-seeing pie's cracked screen was fizzing with red lights and exclamation marks of every size. Well, he boomed, that didn't go very well, did it? I'm sorry I messed up, Plog said quietly. We all messed up, sighed Danjo. Ferp nodded. We went to pieces. Those horrid fists, Zill shuddered. They're almost as revolting as Furboy's feet. And we were booed. Danjo closed his eyes. The whole experience was rotten. But the really rotten thing is that loads of monsters lost their money, Plog said. The fists took it and we couldn't stop them. No one can stop those things, Zill declared. At least only a few people saw us fail, said Danjo. Afraid not, said Pi. The three o'clock poos had a reporter there with a camera. All Trashland has seen his report. Plog, Zill, Ferp and Danjo stared in horror as Pi played the pictures on his screen. There were four of them, slipping, there were the four of them, slipping, tumbling and getting walloped. The re reporter's voice cut in. From the moment they emerged from their still-smoking Slimobile, the Slime Squad's members were largely useless. Even with the addition of a mysterious fourth monster in a strange costume who kept getting in everyone's way. Already, monsters all over Trashland are asking, has the Slime Squad had its day? Plog looked away as the crowds on the screen began to boo, unable to watch any more. So that's what we get. That's what we get for risking our necks and trying to help. Zill stormed, her eyes full of tears. Well, if people think we're finished, fine. I quit. Me too," said Danjo hotly. Ferp nodded. Someone else can deal with those fist things next time. But Plog looked at them. There is no one else. You can't quit. Tell them, Pi. I can't tell anyone to risk their lives if they don't want to, Pi replied. I'm sure Pi will find some replacements for us, said Ferp. He's already found you, Plog. Perhaps you can all say you can all save the world together. But you can't go, Plog implored the frog monster. None of you can. We were so surprised today we forgot the most important thing. The slime squad is a team. We only failed because we only failed because we tried to tackle them one by one without a plan. Ah, uh -uh, 
fur boy, growled Zill. We got nowhere because your dumb slimy feet made us all slip about so much we couldn't even stand. That's not fair. Pug Plog was stung. It was you who knocked me out of my boots. The two of you nearly squished me, Ferp hoffed. And as for Danjo squirting me in the face, that was Plog's fault, Danjo protested. He jogged my pincers. What a lot of moaners, Zill complained. But then Pi cut across their bickering. Warning, he warbled. My senses have sighted the fearsome fists heading for Goo York area. I believe they are going to rob another rank bank. Plog gasped. So soon after the last one. Even if the slime mobile was working, said Ferp, we wouldn't be able to stop them. That's right, said Zill. Oh, well, I I wanted to spend more time watching Smelly Vision anyway. She blew her nose noisily. That's just fine. Oh, Zill, Plog sighed. Danjo sniffed. I'll make myself useful by fixing the slime mobile for the next guys who want to use it. Plog shook his head sadly. You can't give up, Danjo. Please. Danjo hesitated for a moment. Then he slowly trudged away on his three legs. Ferp! Plog looked at him hopefully. Uh, you can keep the cauldrons, my dear Plog, but I've been meaning to make more time for my experiments in any case. The frog monster nodded to himself. There really is so much you can do with mixed up slime. Pie! Plog begged. Stop them, please. All must find their own way, said Pie mysteriously. Yeah, to the exit, Zill agreed. But you three have always been my heroes, Plog insisted. You can't just give up when something goes wrong. Well, you did, Zill shot back. Plog opened his mouth to reply, but realised she was right. He let his fear of his foul feet spoil his life and send him scuttling underground. But you're better than me, he whispered. Tell them, Pi. But Pi remained silent. Alone now in the hidden HQ, Plog pulled the golden shorts off his head, carefully folded them and placed them inside his waistcoat. Then he clanked off to begin the long journey home.